everyone, I'm Becky. And I'm Sarah. And we're doing Bickering Book Reviews. Today we're talking about Forest of the Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow we're going with. Um, and we received, you received a copy of the ARC through, at BEA mm -hmm. from Penguin. Um, and this book is a retelling of the origin story of Snow White's evil queen. Shifong? Shifong, yeah. Shifong. Is a beautiful commoner who is lured by the promise of her destiny to do whatever it takes to become the new empress, even if it involves dark magic and murder. Murder. And that is the very, like, crux of what this is. Um, Can I first start off with saying that I appreciate that at the beginning they had the pronunciation guide of they the do. different characters and how the characters related. Like, I super appreciated yes, that. Yes, we need a good chart. And I, appreci I also appreciate that because um, I think it makes it better for a large audience. I also totally appreciate the fact that this is a book about Asian characters based, and there's a lot of Asian mythology weaved in. Um, I don't know Asian mythology from what I've read on Goodreads. It's accurate what they weave in, so. I just thought that the, like, the Forest of a Thousand Lantern story was beautiful. Like, I thought that was beautiful. It was. So the, I mean, there were some kind of mythology aspects that I really kind of did enjoy and were probably my favorite parts of this book and um it's very this book is is the story of the evil queen before snow white and it is very similar to ferris by marissa meyer and i i think she did it better that so, julie yeah. c dow did it better i i agree and i felt like i constantly was kind of comparing the I two was books too. and like nowhere does it say you know this is a read-alike or anything like that i just in my mind was constantly I mean, comparing it's the, the same story I mean, yeah. And I think why this worked better for me was um, that this author lets Shi Feng be unlikable. She's she's the evil queen. She's going to be unlikable. Where Marissa Meyer tried to make... Well, but her development was balanced. I mean, so you could... Like, Shi Feng started off as a character that you could connect with. And then she kind of devolves into this villain. At, so but you can understand it. My problem with the book is... I didn't really think she was that well developed. I didn't think any of the characters were that well developed. I mean, she wasn't greatly developed, but when comparing it to Ferris, well, yes, she certainly to was. Ferris, and yes. I think that there was more balance there. Like at first, she kind of, she found really could have gone either way. I think, right? She really could have, and I think that's what I appreciate in that. That's where a good villain comes from. That's true. It's definitely a good villain story. I just never, I never really got into it like like it's well written and it's her first book and it's very well written for its first book but I just never got grabbed and I think it's because there are so many of these fairy tale retelling books that you've got to do something like totally over the top different I agree and I also think there were too many characters going on I think there were a lot of by characters. getting all of these characters like laying all of these characters out I think I would have been interested to learn about like any of them more about any of them. I especially like the fact that Shiro, kind of one of the main heroes in this book, is um, a little person. Yes. And it, it wasn't like a, I mean, it really wasn't a big deal. It was, it was referred to in the context that it would have been. At that time period. At, at the, it was, like it was of the time period, but like he was a hero. Right. And like, you know, he, he rocked it out. And like, I would have loved to learn more about his storyline. And He even had a romance. I would have loved to learn more about the romance. Like, I I was interested. I, I would have been okay with learning about basically anybody else's backstory. So I think I, I also needed just a little bit more. It's a long book to need more. It is a long book. and um, It's a slow go at the beginning. It was, it was hard to get into. It was hard to get into. But there were certainly some pops of... Pops of, like, important of interest and... It was there. Like, the, the structure was there, I think. It's like, I feel like there are books that are written to be, like, literature, and then there are books that are written to be consumed for fun. And this is definitely verging into the literature world, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and agree. so, like I said, I mean, it's 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 well written, and I'm, I mean, I'm glad that I wrote it, and I, I'm... I, I hope she has great success because, like I said, she's doing something a little different than anybody else is doing. And um, as somebody who has very good friends that are Asian and have said to me, we don't see ourselves in books. I love that she has this book for them. I agree. Um, so, yeah, I think we yeah, should just rate it. We're ready to read it. 
So our rating scale is the unicorn to horse scale. We start up at five unicorns. Obviously. We go down, obviously, we go down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it's not special or sparkly or awesome. So it gets a horse. I'm giving Forest of a Thousand Lanterns three unicorns. I, um, I like I said, I, it's one of those books that I respect more than I like. That's a really great way to put it because I am right there with you in the same boat. She, I think. I respect it more than I liked it. Um, I think she really developed her villain, and I liked I liked kind of the, some of the cultural aspects and the different unique kind of aspects that you don't see in other books. Right. So, yeah, that's where we are. That's where we are. Bye. We'll see you around. Bye. Bye.